Hi, everyone, and welcome to this broadcast. Mark DeJesus here, bringing you insights for your healing and freedom journey. I'm all about encouraging people and equipping people to experience greater mental, emotional, and relationship health. Today, what I want to get into is some further insight to your journey to understand your relationship with your parents and get a sense of how it has affected some patterns that may be happening in your life currently today. Now, I believe we should be able to look at our relationship with our parents in a healthy way, with sobriety. Many people feel very uncomfortable doing this. They feel like it's disrespectful or dishonoring. Many people are just very uncomfortable, don't want to go there. It's too much pain, too much heartache. But I think it's necessary as a part of the healing and freedom journey to understand where you've come from, how it's affected your life, so we can learn and sometimes relearn and allow the healing process to take place in how we relate to God, how we relate to ourselves and our thought world, and how we relate to the world around us. So today what I want to get into is I want to get into 10 struggles that reveal that you had emotionally immature parents. Now, in a previous video, I did signs that your parents were emotionally immature, which I think is a very, very helpful resource. I mentioned a book, uh, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, How to Heal from Distant, Rejecting, or Self-Involved Parents by Lisa Gibson. It's a very popular book, and I'd mentioned it in the last video. You may want to check that out because it could bring some illumination. But what I want to bring about is I want to bring about, okay, these are some things that they manifest in your life, and they're signs that you were under parenting that was emotionally immature. And these things have come out of the years of my own personal work in my life and the years of sitting in one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and helping people process through their life and their journey and seeing these patterns over and over again. Now, just because you see one of them doesn't mean, oh, okay, this is it. It, it, it. It's more like a combination of these things. But these are 10 things I think you need to be aware of that, hey, this comes out of not being equipped emotionally. And it could mean that your parents were emotionally immature. They didn't, they didn't have what was needed to be able to give you a baseline sense of equipping. The first one is you watching your life, you watching your journey that you find you don't know how to recognize and work through your own emotional needs because your needs were neglected. So it's hard to identify your emotions. And when I talk about emotional work, really it's, there's so many avenues we can go into, but quite simply, it's being able to identify what you're feeling, interpret what that means. What does this feeling mean? What, 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 what are beliefs that are surrounding this? What are some things I need to be aware of? And how do I move through these emotions to either get strengthened, gain some healing, gain some maturity in my own life, in my own journey? And, that, and that's what we're all needing when it comes to emotions. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what it means. And here's what I can do to walk through it. So it's, it's tools that we need to be able to utilize. And for many, we don't have that. We don't have the ability to process emotions. When it comes to emotions, and this is news for many people, emotions are meant to be worked through, not suppressed, not ignored, not dismissed. They're meant to be worked through. And so because of this lack of being able to tend to your emotional needs, you lack self-awareness or discernment. And many people that I work with, they have an emotion that's rising to the surface, a series of emotions, but they have no idea what it means, or they often interpret it in very harsh, judgmental ways that don't produce any fruit or freedom. So they stay stuck in these cycles. So do you find, many of you might find right at, right at the jump, like, yeah, I'm manifesting this. Again, these are things you are seeing manifesting in your life. Uh, number two is you dismiss your emotional pain. So when it comes to maybe somebody asking you how you're doing, or if, if, if it comes to you recognizing need and asking for those needs, you dismiss it. You dismiss what you're going through. You dismiss things that are hard in your life, and you push it away. The third thing is that you feel guilty acknowledging your needs or asking about your needs. You feel bad when you're trying to work through how something affected you. You can even feel like, oh, I'm being, I'm being too selfish by acknowledging my needs. Number four, you may struggle to regulate your emotions. And this 
is a big one because this can go into a lot of areas in our life. Emotional regulation is part of emotional intelligence. It is, it is a very important aspect of our journey. You have your ups, you have your downs, but you learn how to navigate and develop an overall steadiness in the journey, right? And for most of us, it's like steadiness. I'm over here, I'm over there, I'm all over the place. And when someone is really all over the place emotionally, it is a major sign, not only of emotionally immature parenting, lack of parenting, neglect, it can often be a sign of trauma and, and significant pain in someone's life that's just not been dealt with, especially going back to childhood. And this can go into a lot of areas. It can go into massive mood swings. It can, it can influence areas like bipolar or even more intense forms of emotional regulation like personality disorder, and where these where it becomes so challenging to be able to just kind of keep an overall level emotional baseline. You get mood swings or you easily lose it when you express your feelings. You don't know how to express something that upsets you without it going into like anger, rage. You can easily feel like you can just snap at any moment. You can overreact or, or spin out on something, right? Because that emotional regulation is taught through healthy parenting, nurture, structure, discipline, love, and that nurture that teaches you how to be able to work through emotions. We teach a lot about nurture. We have, my wife and I have a discussion that we put, put together as a resource, restoring the power of nurture. And that really has to do with how you calibrate your emotions, how you deal with feeling comfort when you are going through difficult and challenging times. So number four is definitely a big one. Number five is you pick very unhealthy relationships. Our parents set a, a healthy grid. Healthy parents set a healthy grid on how we pick relationships and how we relate to people that are even toxic. So for people that have been raised by emotionally immature parents, you'll often pick unhealthy relationships and stay in unhealthy relationships and don't know how to maybe take a stand for yourself, how to put boundaries up, how to say no, how to at times walk away from toxic people and not let it just slime your whole being. How many of you relate to this? Number six is emotional intimacy and vulnerability is a struggle. Now, here's the thing. We all want emotional connection, intimacy, being known, being seen, being loved. We want it, but we're afraid of it. So it's this interesting dance that we play in that keeps us in cycles. We want it, but we avoid it. We run from it. We want it, but we avoid it. We run from it. We want it, but we avoid it. We run from it. And because vulnerability is frightening, because it hasn't been calibrated in you, the safety of being able to express what you're going through in a vulnerable place and feel that you're loved in the midst of it, and there's grace available. And that's God's perspective towards us as he walks with us through these things. But a lot of times in our journey, we didn't have that modeled. So we don't even know what that feels like. So that vulnerability is quite frightening. Number seven is addictions become a way that we numb out our pain. It becomes a way of coping, a way of escaping. And addictions are basically something we look to outside of ourselves to try to help us disconnect from pain, to feel something different because what we're feeling is too much, either the pain or the emptiness. And we're the pain of emptiness. So whether it's a substance, whether it's pornography, it can even move into workaholism. There's all kinds of addictions that just cause us to have an altered state of feeling so that we don't deal with with our pain. Why? Because emotional immaturity didn't teach us how to work through a hard day, how to access nurture, how to walk through recovery. Because all of this that I'm sharing with you here is really an inability to work through emotions, work through pain, and grow. You see, the journey, and this is important for us to understand our healing journey, the point of healing. What's the point of healing in our life? Like, where are we headed in this? The point of healing is actually greater maturity. And what's maturity in our life is we manifest more of the fruit of the Spirit. So the love, joy, and peace 
the gentleness, kindness that's available in the fruit of the Spirit that is at work within us that needs to be developed in our lives. Well, healing gets that process going because it's hard to manifest love when your heart's broken and you don't even know what love is like. It's hard to manifest joy when you're going through chronic depression, you've been neglected, and there's all this trauma and pain and complex trauma and all this stuff, right? So as we heal, the end goal is greater maturity in our lives. And so part of maturity is learning to find healthy ways to work through the pain in our life. And addictions try to cut that off and create a counterfeit pathway to try to feel relief. Number eight is you may lack empathy for others. Empathy is a very, very important trait. It's a very, very important practice to have in your life, ability. And I believe that empathy is taught and emphasized and equipped in the home. It's the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, connect to what they're going through. It gives you compassion and grace towards them. And that helps set the stage for your perception of that person. Now, most of the time we get out of empathy really easily. We get judgy, we get harsh, we get critical, we get very shaming in our perspective. We do it to ourselves, we do it to other people. And you may struggle to have empathy. You may be very, very judgy of other people. You may default to judgment that as your like default setting is on judgment. You may also, because you lack empathy, and one of the reasons empathy is not happening is not only because of lack of equipping, but you've, as a result, become very self-focused. So you're always staring at yourself, so you can't see, look up, and relate to others in a healthy way and flow out to others. And in fact, emotionally immature parents, they are self-focused. They are lost in themselves. So therefore, they cannot have effective empathy towards you. And you may notice that being reproduced in your life, provided that you stay, well, where there's going to be a change. So it doesn't have to be that way forever. So that you can say, today's going to start a new day. I'm going to start learning how to exercise empathy and how to connect to empathy. And empathy starts with compassionate grace, starts with uh, meeting at the beginning of what love says. And love says, I take you in and I'm connecting with you relationally. Number nine is you have a contemptuous relationship with yourself. When you look at that word contemptuous and break it down just to contempt, and that word contempt, to have contempt, means to despise or like to look down on. The best way I describe contempt is like kind of looking down on someone or looking down on something. Many of you practice this towards yourself, right? And uh, another word is disrespect. When you have been raised by emotionally immature parents, it sets you up to not respect yourself. So therefore, people run over you very easily. You um, you stay in toxic relationships. You get beat up and you just take it and don't know what to do. You can end up being a very victim-minded person. You're, you're, so this goes into a lot of areas. It goes into you being hard on yourself, being an enemy to yourself. You default to shaming yourself. You feel stupid. A lot of situations, to, to put it bluntly, you just kind of feel stupid. You have conversations with people, you walk away, you feel stupid. You, you, go, you do something, you ask a question, you feel stupid. You just, you, just, you just have this like harshness about yourself because there wasn't an equipping on you being kind to yourself. Parents are, are to pick up when someone's in a self versus self battle to help speak into that. Now, even in healthy homes, kids are going to have struggles. Kids are going to have battles, right? Uh, growing up with healthy parents doesn't mean you're not going to have battles and, and struggles and significant obstacle, obstacles to overcome. But it means there's somewhat of a baseline given on how to navigate through the storms of life. And number 10, as you feel lost and you manifest constant confusion, uh, my, my inbox constantly is with emails of people who just, they're struggling with their direction, they're struggling with a sense of confusion. I'm struggling with a sense of sneezing. <laughs> I had to mute the mic for a second there. Um, but they, they, they manifest this lack of direction. They're just, they're just rudderless. They don't know where to point their compass. They feel confusion and where to land with their thoughts. They're trying to think about where they are, where they need to go. They don't know what to do. They just feel constantly lost in this. So if you feel like these fit you, you may want to check out the book that I recommended 
on the um, emotionally immature parents that could that's a that has a deep dive worth of stuff but if you feel like the materials and resources that I'm teaching you on are helpful to your journey jump into the heart healing journey because this is what I'm about I'm about helping people to experience greater awakening healing and transformation in their heart and life and it starts with areas of the heart that we need help with, we need to learn to walk through so we can become more aware of how to navigate this healing and freedom journey, how to navigate our mental health in effective ways. So which one was the most helpful to you? If this video was a blessing to your life, would you do me a favor? Would you like, subscribe, share it with a friend of yours? Say, hey, this helped me out. Maybe this will encourage you too. If you'd like to support these and future episodes, go to markdejesus.com, click on the donate button. You can do a one-time donation or become a regular supporter. I'm just glad to be a brother from another mother to be an encouragement to your life and journey. So Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be back with some more insights and more stuff to help equip you in your healing and freedom journey. In the meantime, I'm out.